Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let us start. Um, welcome. Hello and welcome to Connections Through Culture Grant Program 2023 Information Session. Uh, this session is hosted by Indonesia Arts Team. This is the fourth of a series of the information session that has been hosted by our colleagues from the other countries as well. Um, before we start, allow me to introduce myself as well as my team who is joining with me today. Uh, my name is Levina Wirawan. You can call me Lev. Um, I am the program manager of the team. And today I am joined by my dear colleagues, uh, Kemi Camilia Harahap, uh, who is the head of arts, as well as Luna, Luna Hapsari who is the program coordinator and the three of us will be uh, presenting and sharing today's session. So now onto the house rules. Um, if you're interested to apply for this grant, you must have a good level of English or have support from someone with a good level of English, such as a translator or interpreter when needed and to ensure smooth communications. This session will last for around one hour and will be delivered in English language with Bisindo interpreters. And today we have Mine and Kaka uh, supporting us. There will be a presentation for around uh, 30 minutes and the rest of the time will be uh, dedicated to the questions and answers. This session will be recorded and shared publicly on British Council channels after the session. We ask you to kindly mute yourself when you are not speaking to the group. Uh, we may switch off your mic if you forget to do so. We also recommend you to turn off your camera to ensure smooth running of the online meeting. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please kindly write it in the chat box and we will address them either directly through the chat box or during the Q&A session. And then during the Q&A, we will address any other unanswered questions from the chat box, chat box first. And if you have any further questions, and if we still have time, we will try as much as possible uh, to answer your questions. And we will uh, welcome you to raise your hands and we will call upon your name to ask your questions directly. Uh, through the mic. So what is the Connections Through Culture? Uh, it is a grants program run by the British Council in the UK and East Asia. It is designed to support new connections, exchanges and collaborations between the arts and cultural sectors in the UK and countries in, South, in East Asia. Uh, just want to clarify that East Asia in this case is covering some countries in East Asia, Southeast Asia, as well as Australia and uh, New Zealand. These grants would support collaborative projects delivered through digital, in-person and or hybrid approach. The project delivery period is between December 2023 this year until October 2024 next year. Funds will be transmitted uh, by January 2024. The application deadline will be the 23rd of October 2023 uh, uh, on midnight. So what is the grant amount and who is it for? So uh, this grant is currently open for applicants uh, of collaboration projects between the UK and uh, applicants from one of the nine eligible countries. Uh, those countries are Australia, mainland of China, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Myanmar, New Zealand, the Philippines, and Thailand. Uh, so for applications between the UK and Australia, Japan, and New Zealand will be eligible to get a grant of up to 5,000 pounds sterling per project. And the remaining countries, uh, which are applications between uh, UK uh, with mainland China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, or Thailand, will be eligible for funds of up to £10,000 sterling per project. What can the grants be used for? 
so the CTC grants uh, can be used for delivery of projects that are either digital, face-to-face, -face, and or hybrid plan. Uh, and then various approach uh, can be employed, such as uh, artistic residencies, exhibitions, festivals, showcase workshops, performances, or film screenings. Uh, projects which focus on digital innovation uh, could also uh, could also apply for this grant, as well as uh, activities such as conferences, panels, talks, as well as creative uses of archive, uh, and then research projects uh, for future uh, collaboration project ideas. The key themes. Um, and um, how the grant could be used is the grant is mainly to support processes and time to develop projects with artistic artistic expressions or creativity at the core. And the project should uh, result in collaborative activities uh, such as artistic or creative exchange, uh, skills exchange, knowledge sharing and practice and co-production towards new artistic and creative content. Uh, we definitely encourage proposals of projects uh, responding to the following priority themes uh, that are diversity and inclusion, as well as climate crisis. Now onto the grant timeline. Um, the application will close on the 23rd of October midnight, and all of the applications must be done through the submittable site. Uh, the link will be available. Um, the link are already live and will you will uh, will be available on these slides. The selection process uh, will be between late October and uh, November 2023. And then we expect to announce and confirm the uh, successful grantees um, via email by the 23rd of uh, November. Following that, uh, it will be the contracting process. Um, successful applications will sign a British Council grant agreement. Payment will be made 30 days following the receipt of each invoice, and there may be specific uh, payment conditions per country. So just want you to be aware from the start. Um, and then the grantee orientation will take place in January next year after the contracting process. And then the grant delivery, the project delivery is between December this year until October next year. Uh, so please be mindful when you make your project application proposal um, that some uh, that the funds will only be uh, transferred in around January. So if you would like to have some activities before then, uh, just make sure that the project team is aware. And then after that, uh, the grant project completion is no later than the 31st of October 2024. And then after the project is finished, um, a pro project completion report should be submitted within the 30 days uh, by the end of the project. Uh, projects longer than six months uh, will require a submission of interim report. Uh, at the end of month five of the project. And right now uh, for the next session, I will welcome Kemi to uh, continue with the presentation. Thank you, Lavina. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Camelia, but you can call me Kemi. And I'll be continuing the presentation from here onwards. Um, so on the eligibility conditions, you must complete an application which includes a project budget, uh, the partner's agreement letter, and the CVs of the project leaders. And it must be received by the 23rd of October in the submittable application site. So each application must comprise of at least one UK partner and one East Asia partner from one of the eligible East Asia countries. So for instance, it must have one UK partner and for instance, an Indonesian partner to be eligible. And the organizations should also be registered in the UK or any of the eligible East Asia countries. And the project proposal should have a timeline, as Lavina mentioned, ending no later than the 31st of October, 2024.
next as for the projects itself it must be projects in the arts culture or creative sectors uh, within the in any of the following art forms music film literature visual arts theater and dance architecture design fashion and creative technology next we also welcome proposals that have cross art form projects, uh, projects with themes that are relevant to the creative economy, as well as cross disciplinary art projects such as arts and science or arts and technology. However, do note that if you are a funding body, you are unfortunately not eligible for this grant. Throughout the uh, selection process, we will be evaluating based on these four criteria. The first one is on the quality, and we say that the proposals must be of high artistic or creative quality. It must be innovative in its approach and shows consideration how the project might also continue after the year of delivery. Um, on partnerships, we must see that the proposals are mutually and equally benefiting for both the UK and the East Asia applicants. On management, we want to make sure that the proposals are well planned and resourced, and it demonstrates also an, an, an equitable use of the budget between UK and the East Asia applicants. And on theme and relevance, we want to make sure that the proposals also address topics such as equality, diversity, inclusion, or environmental sustainability. So what's next? You should also read through the application toolkit and the frequently asked questions. Um, and when you apply, you have to read through the application toolkit and FAQs quite carefully. Um, you should also speak to your possible partners, uh, form your collaborative project idea, and then make sure that you plan time to complete the form on submittable in English. So the rule of thumb is make sure to read through all the guidance very carefully. And if in doubt about anything, you go back to the guidance or you can also contact us if you have any further questions. So we understand that there might be some challenges when you're applying for a grant under Connections to Culture. For instance, you may not have any current connections in the, uh, in the counterpart region. Um, so we suggest that you should check online artist networks in the UK and East Asia. Um, our team in British Council Indonesia, we have a site that we can um, direct you to and we can share the link on the chat of some artist networks that we've compiled to help you make your application. The British Council staff in East Asia are available to refer or help, but it will still be the role of the lead applicants to find a suitable counterpart for this uh, project. If you have a prospect counterpart already, then you want to make sure that your values and ways of working are aligned. Um, do you think that you can both work regularly and equitably during the project timeline that you're proposing? Because that's very important to make sure that everybody is on board. Um, and if you are selected as a project team with you as a lead partner, uh, the British Council staff in East Asia, country of yours, will be the first point of contact for any support around risks, around the delivery, timeline, budget, partnership, and other stakeholders. So, for instance, if you're working on a UK-Indonesia project, then it would be myself, Levina, and Luna who will be your first point of contact. So when you apply through the submittable platform, it's important to take note that submittable is a external site um, and it is the only site that we use for the CTC UK East Asia grants. Um, the link is on the application toolkit as well as on our British Council website. And you need to create a submittable account. It's free of charge and you won't be able to actually view the form until you have a submittable account. So I would suggest for you to try and do that first. Um, and it might also be advisable to keep an offline copy of your answers in case there's any unexpected technical issues. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions or concern about using or creating a submittable account, please check the help pages and support email of the platform. 
And you can also contact us at ctc at britishcouncil.org. But if it's primarily about the technical issues around Submittable, um, you should contact Submittable first. As for consent, we will be requiring you to agree that we keep and share your information for the purposes of the grant application and if you get selected for the whole duration of your project delivery. When you complete the application, you also want to prepare um, almost all questions for new applicants and previous grantees are the same. So make sure that yours and your partner's contact details would be required. Uh, you make sure that you have your the CVs of your project leader, any portfolio links, letters of agreement from the partners will also be required. So make sure you prepare that well ahead. Uh, the submittable platform lets you save your application draft as you go along. So make sure that all your details are correct. And once you press submit, there will be no further editing. So make sure double check uh, before you click submit. And the submittable form has a collaboration, uh, has collaboration enabled. So you'll be able to also invite your project partner to collaborate on the form. So the link is visible on the top right hand corner named invite collaborators. But please remember that the applications must be made in English. And we would not um, review if it's not in English. Um, as and then what else to prepare? Of course, your proposals. Uh, please review the criteria very carefully. Uh, make sure you know what you are going to do, how and what you how and why you are going to do it, when and with whom you'll be doing all the activities, what is innovative and unique in your proposals. Um, what are the short term and long term impacts that your project is trying to achieve? What is your project plan and your timeline? And on budget, aside from the questions which you can answer in the text, uh, sorry, in the form as free text, we will also ask you to complete a spreadsheet. So please download that project budget template from the British Council webpage um, and then complete your proposed budget with the estimate amounts in. Um, GBP or in Great Britain pounds. And then what else to consider? Um, do consider your intended or targeted reach for the project. Who are your target audience of online and offline activities? Uh, do you intend to have any online or offline audiences or participants aside from your project team? how many audiences or participants do you expect per online or offline activity? And if it's online, which platforms will they take place in? So we understand that not all grant projects might have public audiences or participants, but the way that you communicate your project depends on your objectives. Another area to think about is around access support. So we ask all applicants to make sure that they embed audience accessibility into their projects. Um, explain what your project would do, will do to address this, including, including any um, accessibility costs in the budget proposals and give the reasonable justifications. If you have uh, accessibility requirements for the delivery of your proposed project, um, you will be able to request additional funds beyond the core grant. Um, so, but these costs are not guaranteed because although we will do everything that we can to support your needs. If you identify as disabled, you are welcome to also contact us for any possible support we might be able to offer or assist you to make your application. Um, there are also some British Council policies and requirements should your proposed activities involve children or vulnerable adults. Um, so there's equality, diversity and inclusion, environmental sustainability. Please do refer back to the application toolkit and the frequently asked questions. Another thing to think about is around sustainability and longevity of the project. So we encourage applicants to also consider long term impact and relationship of the collaboration beyond the project. So um, what we wanted to mention is particularly for Indonesia projects or projects that involve Indonesian counterparts, the British Council in Indonesia has been also exploring co-funding partnerships with the Indonesian government through a scheme called Dana Indonesiana, which is the Indonesian Arts Endowment Fund that is managed by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology. 
So we are hoping that through this, um, it can further upscale your UK and Indonesia CTC projects after you finish. And the idea is that if you have already received a CTC grant from British Council, you are eligible to then make an application for further funding through Danda Indonesiana. So do think about how you might be able to scale your project further after your CTC project ends and um, maximize the opportunities through Danda Indonesiana. So for full information will be available on the Danda Indonesiana website. Um, we are also happy to maybe talk more about this if anybody have any plans to take your project forward. Um, and there might also be some colleagues from the Ministry of Education and Culture in this uh, call in case uh, anybody would like to also add or uh, comment. And then um, lastly, some other opportunities. Um, so you might, if you have been following British Council's websites or social media recently, you might have also been aware that um, there is a, another grant that is available at the moment called, uh, which is organized by the British Council Visual Arts team. It's open to uh, festivals and biennales in the UK and eligible countries to apply for grants up to £10,000 to support visual artist participation between December 2023 until February 2024, uh, 2025. So full information is available on the British Council Visual Arts website, which is linked there. Um, so if you are uh, considering between the British Council CTC grant and the British Council uh, Biennale's Connects grant, uh, we would perhaps uh, suggest for you to think about carefully which one might be more relevant for you as uh, both opportunities are available, but you we would not be able to double fund for the same project. And lastly, um, some of you might also be aware about the British Council International Collaboration Grants, uh, which is a program that had happened previously, and we are planning to launch it again in early 2024 where organizations in the UK and internationally can apply for grants up to £75,000 to support artists to make and develop projects with their international peers. Um, so more information will also be shared in due course. Um, however, this will be uh, directed also towards the website uh, at British Council UK's website. And lastly, for submission and any further inquiries, uh, please make sure that you uh, have the deadline correct. It is on the uh, at 23.59 GMT on uh, 23rd of October. I'm not sure if clocks have changed by then, so please make sure. Kemi, you're on mute. Sorry, apologies. Um, just question whether I, if you've, if I've missed anything or is it just this slide? Just this slide. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so I'll, sorry about that. I'll repeat myself again on submissions and on inquiries. Um, the applications should be submitted through submittable by this deadline. And please make sure that the, you get the deadline correct, um, especially with clocks changing. Um, not quite sure whether it will be the same time uh, by then or whether it's back to GMT, but please make sure that you have the timing correct. Um, and any inquiries about the application, you can uh, send an email or inquiries through to this email address or directly to the Indonesian um, team as well. And if you have any technical support needed with Submittable, please refer to the help page of Submittable and click the email support for technical help button if you cannot find any existing answers to your questions. And I believe um, I'll hand the mic back to Levina, who will share a little bit about some examples of CTC projects that we've had in the past. Thank you, Kemi. Uh, th these are some of the CTC projects between UK and Indonesia that we have supported in the past. Uh, we compiled all of those stories in the link that is available on the chat. 
I uh, just want to share a little bit uh, some of the projects that we have supported in the past is uh, titled Urban Legends. It's between Flatpak Festival in the UK and Sahabat Seni Nusantara. Uh, looking at it, it was it, it was a film focused project, looking at feminism, culture, um, horror, such as as well as Islamophobia, uh, and talking about uh, culture diversity and urban legends uh, through film. So it's a very interesting uh, project as well. You might see that on the photo, there is a image of Pochong. And the other project is called uh, Jerry Trans. It is a trans, uh, a trans stories transcending border. Uh, it is between Intersastra in Indonesia and Kairani Baroka in the UK. It's a literature and performing arts project uh, capturing and highlighting the stories of uh, trans artists in the both countries. And the other projects is uh, Seimbang Balance is between Hilang Child in the UK and Prabumi and Ninda Felina in Indonesia. It's a music focus project uh, in a form of a field recording album. Uh, capturing the sounds of uh, of the fields in both countries, uh, addressing and asking the question of what are the sounds that we will hear in 20, 30 years from now in light of the uh, urgency of the climate crisis. Another project around climate crisis is a very recent, just recently finished, uh, a comic project. Uh, by rewriting extinction and um, Ariela, Sheila, and Punky from Indonesia, uh, looking at uh, waste issues in ocean in Indonesia and how that is affecting uh, the ecosystem and the wildlife. So those are some of the examples. We have more and more stories of exciting projects that we have supported in the past. We encourage you to have a look at those stories uh, in case you need some ideas or provocations. Moving on, uh, questions and answer. So can I welcome Luna uh, to uh, bring us up to speed with the questions that's been coming through? Uh, yeah, the first one, um... Could you elaborate more on the criteria of the lead applicant? For example, he or she might be might not be an artist, but uh, a project manager. Uh, because on the application form, there are questions regarding lead applicants' art activities. Kemi, would you like to come in on that? Okay, so um, the question is whether or not uh, if whether or not it's possible if the lead applicant is not an artist. Um, I think that would still be okay as long as the actual project is an artistic or a creative project. Um, oftentimes we see that, you know, sometimes the producer or the manager of an artist um, is the one who's making the application on behalf of the organization. So um, that would still be okay as, well, like I said, as long as the project itself is an artistic application uh, project. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I'm not on yet. <laughs> How to find collaborators and can British Council facilitate it? So we are not able to match make uh, if you do not currently have any UK or Indonesian or other East Asian counterparts. Um, we can make suggestions. However, it would be um, still the role of the applicant to find your suitable counterpart. Um, we have a link in our website which lists down a directory of uh, UK and Indonesian artist networks, which uh, if Luna, you could help share the link on into the chat, that could be a really yes. good way to maybe uh, kickstart your research into uh, your partners. And if from there you still have any questions, you can direct them to us. Uh, we might be able to refer you to some organizations, but in the end, it will still be your uh, decision. 
Okay. And, and on uh, that, if I may add a little bit more on that yeah. question, um, is to let everyone know that uh, this Connections Through Culture program uh, has been going on for a few years now. Uh, right now, this is our sixth round. Uh, it has been going for very successful since 2019, and we're pretty confident that it's going to continue uh, for more and more rounds each year. Uh, to come. So if let's say for this opportunity, you haven't managed to find a suitable collaborator, uh, we would always recommend you to apply again in the next round. And as Kemi uh, had alluded earlier, there are also other funding uh, collaboration opportunities besides this Connections Through Culture that you can definitely check out. Thank you. Um. Uh, is our nonprofit uh, organizations eligible to apply? Um, I believe they are eligible as long as they are not funding bodies themselves. Um, however, I think it also depends. Um, maybe Nijing, do you have any answers to this? I would like to invite my colleague Nijing. Hi, hello. Hi. Yeah, I think you are right. So if you are a um, funding body, then sorry, you are not eligible to the CTC application. And also, in I would like to refer colleagues to look through our documents of this uh, application toolkit. And also, there's uh, frequently asked questions about the criteria is quite detailed listed there. So you can check through the criteria there if you are uh, for organization and for individuals. As long as you meet those listed criteria, you are eligible. Okay. Um, I guess uh, we can open the question and answer session to the floor if anyone has any question. Hi, um, thank you for organizing this uh, sharing session. And I have uh, one question is I'm Chinese uh, citizen, but I live in the UK at the moment, um, but I'm not UK national. Is it um, OK for me to apply as a UK partner or I have to find a people, a UK national artist as my partner? Um, thank you for your question. So if you are uh, not a UK national, that is still fine. However, it really depends on your address and where you are paying taxes. So if you are paying UK taxes and your current address is in the UK, then um, you are not eligible to apply as a, like um, as a Chinese counterpart, but you would need to find um, uh, yeah, you would need to find a, a, an appropriate counterpart for that. Uh, but if you are currently um, still paying taxes in your home country, then um, and your address is in your home country, then uh, you can apply for a collaboration with the UK, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, uh, if that means um, I I. I live in UK at the moment. I just and I pay UK tax, and I just need to uh, find a Chinese partner. Is is that correct? Yes, technically that's correct. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Um, Luna, would you be able to help? Because we see that there's a lot of different hands coming in. Would you be able to yes. uh, call them out in so that people uh, yeah. know whose turn? Okay. It is. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. And one common question is uh, how 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 to distribute the fund? Does it have to be distributed evenly, 50-50 between the UK and the East Asia counterpart? Or you could explain about that. Um, I believe for the funds itself, it does need to be quite equitable. Um, but we understand sometimes, you know, some costs might be quite different across the different countries. So as long as it is reasonable um, of the split, then uh, it should be all right. 
and Sarah, please, if you have a question. Hi, um, so basically we already have a partner in Japan and the only thing that we'd like to know is if British Council could support us with um, being introduced to, for instance, videographers or photographers or sign language interpreters in Japan. So we don't need a partner, it's just some of the other industry people that we would be wanting to be linked up with. And if that was something that British Council can support with. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I believe, I think it might also depend on whether or not uh, you need the information for those more industry partners for your application or not. But usually once, um, if you already have a application filled in and you have already been awarded, uh, British Council staff usually does in a way help to kind of monitor the whole project delivery. So we might be able to give some advice on um, those other industry partners or vendors or sign language interpreters, as you say. Um, when it comes to maybe the before the application, uh, we might be able to advise to some extent. Uh, so I think it really depends on what phase you are at right now with your application. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, I think yeah, it's just more for when we have the application and then we want to get more more people involved mm -hmm. with the project. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Dot. Yeah. Uh, please. Um, hi. Um. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So. Um. We're a UK-based org um, organization, and we are in discussion with several partners um, based in one, one is based in Japan, one, oh, sorry, one is based in Australia. Sorry. sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly. Can you, can you speak? Are you able to hear me? Yeah, but your volume is too, too low. Okay, maybe, maybe I can type my question. Yeah. So while waiting for Dot, we can go to Chen, please. Uh, yes, hello, can you hear me? OK, um, so my question is, what is the tax implication for the fund? Like for individuals, do we have to pay income tax um, for the funds or the, the funds can just count as expenses? And the second question is, um, can we apply the same project to other British Council funds? Yeah, that's all. So two questions. I'll try to attempt your questions. So I think on tax, um, it might depend on which country you're from and what the uh, stipulations are. But usually in Indonesia, if this is a grant, then uh, it it would be kind of tax free, um, but perhaps I can invite Nijing once again to give your thoughts about this question. OK, uh, yeah, thank you, Kami, and uh, thank you for this question. Actually, relating to, to tax, I think it also depends on the national laws about tax in the country. So in that case, if, if there is anything unclear, we would suggest that uh, you also consult the tax authority, the local tax authority. What is the relevant regulation is? OK, can can I just be a little bit more particular? Maybe um, I'm just wondering the tax rules for UK based um, applicants. So I'm paying tax in the UK. If it's a grant, generally speaking, it's a not a tax, a no VAT tax on the grant. That's the general rule. But we will need we we that we will need have to see more details of the situation, the cost type, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And should we go back to Dot? I don't know um, the question. I think question. I don't know if you can hear me. I just send the question in the text box. Okay, me on my left. Could you read? Uh, I can read it. 
My question is about applying twice with partnerships in different countries. We are lead applicants in one of the applications, whereas in the other one, we are listed as the partner. Is this allowed? And does this mean at most yeah, we will have one successful applicant despite our role in the project? I see. So I think you are, of course, allowed to apply um, if you are involved in different projects. Um, when we do the selection process, um, we will actually um, kind of come together across the whole uh, region and we might identify whether there are um, the same partners or counterparts in some particular projects. We try our best to um, identify um, the most opportunities for, you know, equal opportunities for most people. So, for instance, we we may think that this project might be more successful, um, you know, in one country rather than your application in the other country. Also, we will kind of look at it from a uh, from an aspect of whether or not, um, you know, it will be relevant and uh, it will be good enough. So we will definitely look at that as a, a consideration. Um, and if uh, if we do, I think we have not, sorry, <laughs> let me try to frame this in a better way. But I think uh, before we have never had the um, like previous example of where we had funded um, the same organization, albeit on different projects. So I think that's probably the way to go is that we will probably identify either one of your projects for us uh, to be selected. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Louise, Beer, please, if you have any questions. Hi there, um, I am looking to apply as an individual artist with a university in New Zealand. Is that acceptable? Um, I think, Beijing, were you trying to come in to answer yeah, this question? Sorry, yeah, sorry. Can, can you repeat your question again? Sure. So I note that you've talked about organisations a lot. But I am mm -hmm. a um, I'm an individual artist based in the UK, hoping to apply with a university based in New Zealand. Yes. I'm just wondering if that is acceptable. So individuals can apply to us as well. Both individual and organization are eligible. Okay, okay brilliant. And is a university eligible? Yes, university is also eligible, but the project has to be an art project. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it, and it will show the collaboration between UK and New Zealand in your case. Yes. And so it's not just a one sided project. It, it needs to be a mutual collaboration project. Yes, exactly. And um, because the the flights to New Zealand would be a considerable part of the grant. Is that able to be paid for by the New Zealand um, university rather than by me, the individual from the UK, from the budget? Our fund is to is the support to deliver the project. So if the flight is one of the activities you have to fly from UK to New Zealand, then it's part of the project expenditure. Mm -hmm. OK, and you will need to discuss and agree with your partner how to cover that. We will be providing funding for this activity, but then for detailed items, which partner, how, they, how you share, you, mm -hmm. you will have to agree with your partner. OK, thank you very much. OK, yeah, so remember you do have one UK partner and one New Zealand partner. OK, the okay. partner can be organization or individual. Brilliant, thank you so much. OK, hope that helps. And John Patterson, I believe you have a question. Yes, thank you, colleagues. Salam alaikum. Thank you for 
putting this together. I, I need help to put my thinking together here, please. I need to speak to somebody after this for a reason. We are part of the Liverpool Sister City collaboration with Surabaya. I've been to Surabaya meeting the blind and the deaf schools and also Jakarta that was under Mozam Malik. Uh, the then Mayor Rizma flew over and visited my school in Liverpool, UK, which is a school for the blind. We specifically have collaborations where a book was written in Indonesia that's being circulated this summer. Now, Minister Tri Rismahari visited this school again because we brought children over from Indonesia and their teachers. And she's asked us to do a collaboration right the way across Indonesia. There are, therefore, other funds, both in Indonesia and with the British government, that we are seeking to maximise the opportunities to get blind children into employment through the arts, and through the cloth and the clothing that I know is made in Indonesia by, by the deaf community. I have a range of match funding opportunities into this bid. There is also the opportunity to expand this into the sister city program that we have with China, where I also visited China and with Japan. What I'm trying to say is there is a unique opportunity to share best practice between Liverpool and Indonesia that can then go out global to visually impaired young people where we know there's some 54 million with no education whatsoever. But I need to speak to somebody in the British Council to share this vision and actually where the money is, where we've identified it. Liverpool has just put a task force together that I'm leading to connect these opportunities from the Metro Mayor himself. And I've discussed this very briefly with Tree Rizma, but I need to speak to somebody there. Can you help me, please? Thanks, John. Um, I believe we could, uh, after this, you, we could arrange a separate conversation um, about your plans and your ideas. But uh, since you've also had a chance to share about your um, ideas and proposals, in case there are also any people who are in the, um, the call right now who might be interested to connect with you to speak more or maybe because they're also still trying to find UK partners. You can leave your contact details in the chat if you don't mind. I have so done that so. People yeah. I've done so. Thank you. Inshallah, it will come together. Good news. Thank you. Luna, anything, and, uh, any more questions? Rob? Campion, I guess, hasn't asked his question. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is a timeline question, really. Um, and I work in the UK in an arts organisation that works with uh, Javanese Gamelan. Um, and if we were to think about work, having a theatrical project, maybe with musical a music ensemble and a dance ensemble in, in Indonesia. Um, part of the process would be to to work to the point where we could have a, a performance in the UK. But the process um, might happen would the idea would be the process could happen within the period up to the October 2024. But the performance in the UK might be after that. So we'd be applying for a grant for the process of, for you know, the the choreography for the for the theatrical work to be done in Indonesia, and and in the UK. Is that something that would be possible, even though the the actual final performance would be, say, maybe in 2025, the beginning of 2025? Thanks, Rob, for your question. Um, I believe it will still be possible for you to um, apply for this grant and uh, you might want to maybe think about other ways of um, showing the outputs of that collaboration, even though the actual um, showcasing bit would be after the grant uh, delivery period ends. 
Um, so as long as you might be able to identify those other ways of showing the outputs of the collaboration, I think that should be fine. And perhaps you might also want to consider looking at um, the grant that we mentioned from the Indonesian government, if it's with Indonesia, um, as a way to kind of further scale up your um, follow up project after the CTC project ends. Okay, thank you. I have uh, yeah. one question is about uh, will the grant be, po be be able to pay for the is it possible to pay the salaries pay salaries with the grant money? So I believe it's not possible to pay salaries like as overheads. Um, but if there are costs for the project, for instance, maybe some professional fees, then um, that still uh, is possible because it's related to the actual activity. Um, perhaps Nijing or others from British Council can confirm. Mm, yes, yeah, can we agree with you? So for salaries, um, no, the project fund cannot really cover the salary of the organization staff, but we can cover the cost associated with the staff. So for example, the staff have to go to somewhere to carry out the activity, then the travel cost of the staff can be eligible to the project budget. Ham Hamja Asan, oh, sorry. Yeah, Hamja Asan, please. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so I just wonder if I applied for a residency um, in Jakarta, for example, uh, during residencies, you usually get per DM expenses. So it's just that's just basic living, you know, like, for example, if it was in Germany, I'd get £30 to just eat a day or travel. I just wonder whether that could be included in residencies and have you funded residencies before and also um, is there a recommended time so should I stay there for three months if sorry or if, if that's the case um, I'm, I'm I work with RAN Grouper on Documenta 15 so I'm continuing the work I did with them if that's in good scale if that makes sense Thank you, Hamja. So uh, with residencies, it's definitely possible for us to fund that. Um, I believe we have um, funded several residencies, either Indonesian artists in the UK or UK artists in Indonesia um, in the previous rounds of CTC. Um, for per diems, um, I, maybe I would have to ask my other colleagues about this, but um, you can always put it in your budgets to see whether or not that's reasonable. Um, and let me just quickly answer your other question, which is about the duration of residencies. Uh, it would really depend on your host and how long they are able to accommodate your residency period. Um, but I believe like um, in the past as well, like most of the residencies we've supported at least were um, a couple of weeks until maybe a month period. So um, those are the ones that we've managed before, but it go, kind of goes back to um, your host and how long they're able to accommodate or host you. Um, can anyone answer the question about per diems? Sure, I can do that. Um, in the past, we have supported various residences projects under this CTC grants. Uh, in which per diems are included in the budget proposal. Uh, in terms of the figure or the amount, please discuss that with your Indonesian collaborator to make sure that it is a reasonably um, a reasonable and accepted amount uh, for your uh, residency here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jing, I believe someone else raised their question, but now uh, I don't see it anymore. Okay, uh, Jing Jing Huang. Oh, hi. Yeah, um, 
my question is uh, still that uh, I am uh, uh, I use a student visa uh, residence in UK, but I didn't pay UK tax. But I am resident here, and and I have uh, an address here. I think uh, in this way I can still count as um, a UK partner, right? Hmm. Um, there might be some considerations that will be taken into account during the selection process. Uh, going back to the objective of this grant program is to support collaborations that would mutually benefit the arts and cultural sector of the two countries that are applying. So in this case, uh, if you are applying as a UK counterpart, then in the proposal, you need to be able to demonstrate how your project might be able to somehow uh, benefit uh, the UK art sector. And same goes for your counterpart from their country, how they would be able to, through this project, benefit uh, um, the, the art sector as well. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, actually, in terms of a residence, we, we, we would mean the tax resident in the UK. Oh, I see. Thank you. <laughs> but worry not, uh, Jingjing. Uh, like I said earlier, it's this program is going on for, uh, we are confident that this program will be going on for many more rounds in the coming years. So I'm sure there will be more opportunities uh, for you to apply in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Louise, please. Louise, hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, sorry, I don't know if that's me. You've already answered my question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Still have two minutes. Um, do we continue with the Q and A session, or? But anyway, if anyone has any further questions, please feel free to email us. I will send the email in the chat box. Yeah. And also, yeah, uh, refer to the toolkit and the FAQ page. Mm -hmm. And just want to reiterate that after this uh, session is closed we will be circulating the recording and the slides to all of your email addresses, uh, all of the people who registered. Uh, and then after that, we will also be putting the slide and the recording uh, that will be so that it's available for public uh, through our website and through our YouTube channels. And if you follow our Instagram account, uh, you will be able to know when it's when it's up. So you can share it with your uh, collaborators and your partners so they can also have the same understanding about the, the opportunity. Um, if no more question, then I think we can close uh, the session for today. Uh, of course, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, the email address is ctc at britishcouncil.org. Uh, please make sure if, if it's related to CTC, uh, it's going through that email address because it's, it will be uh, filtered through that central inbox. Um, and thank you so much once again for lending your time and energy and your enthusiasm in this session. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, for the planning and the application and the collaboration. And again, any questions, reach out to us. And of course, want to say thanks to my dear uh, team and colleagues who's been uh, answering the questions uh, either directly as well as through the chat box. Really appreciate it. Uh, I know you're dialing in from different time zones. It could be somewhat later in, in your local time. So really appreciate that. And of course, last but not least, thank you so much to Kaka and Mine for your amazing interpretation. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
My phone is on mute. You're still on mute. Am I still on mute, everyone? 